I would invite you, if you are able, to remain standing for the reading of the Gospel. Today, from the Gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 46th verse. They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So, throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go. Your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the good news of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I hope this doesn't come as a bit of a disappointment uh, to those of you who thought that maybe the title Blind Spot referred to the uh, popular television show uh, of the same name, where an amnesiac uh, woman wakes up one morning to find her body covered in uh, tattoos that she doesn't know anything about. Uh, Historically, a thing that's uh, usually related to soldiers on leave in Singapore. It's not about that. It's about a man named uh, Bartimaeus. And it's about how you and Bartimaeus and I have something in common. Namely, uh, a blind spot. You're probably familiar with the notion of a blind spot uh, with regard to, for example, in your vehicle. Uh, I have a particularly thick post uh, in, in the windshield, by the windshield of my truck, uh, which makes it impossible for me to see people coming from the left, uh, or from the left or the right, mostly the right, unless I wait a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds and make sure that I look at least three times. I can lose people uh, in the thickness of that post. It scares me a little bit. You've probably uh, become familiar with the notion of the blind spot in your vehicle that uh, the space that uh, starts where your peripheral vision ends and before your rear view mirror kicks in. You can't see people in those areas. You have to uh, be particularly careful. More specifically today, though, uh, the notion of a blind spot is a uh, physical phenomenon. We all, uh, we all have it. Uh, we all have it in both of our eyes, each of our eyes. Uh, your left eye, your right eye, has, has a blind spot. And you can uh, find this uh, little insert uh, in your bulletin. And uh, a, a line is conveniently left out. If you, uh, if you hold this about arm's length, away from your eyes and cover your left eye and look at that little cross. Come on, I don't want to be the only one looking at this. This would make me look silly. And if you move it, look at the cross and move it closer to you, at a certain point that big heavy black dot is going to disappear.
If it hasn't happened, you're a freak of nature. There's no, uh, no getting around it. Everybody has uh, 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 this particular phenomenon in their eyes. Uh, it's called, uh, in the uh, proper terminology, uh, it's, it's called the punctum kekum, uh, but its friends just call it a blind spot. We all have a blind spot. There's a man who is sitting on the dusty road, either on the way into or on the way out of Jericho. He's probably sitting somewhere near the center of things, maybe right by the the monument that commemorates the day that Joshua fit the battle of because that's what happened in Jericho historically. And now Jesus is going through Jericho on His way to Jerusalem. And as this man is sitting in his spot that perhaps he has sat in for a long time, he hears a lot of commotion. He's blind. He doesn't just have a blind spot. He's totally blind. He hears all this commotion and he says, what's happening? And the people say, it's Jesus of Nazareth. And he says, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus, oh, I've heard of Him. That's the healer that has been working in the area of Galilee and is now making his way south. I know who that is. He can tell from the the way the noise is that this huge crowd has amassed and that the crowd is moving. They're not standing still. So he doesn't have much time. He has to start shouting in order to be recognized, to be heard. So he shouts out. And what he shouts out comes as a bit of a surprise to people. He says, Jesus... Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And it's happened so many times uh, in in the Gospels, people try to shut him up. Hey, pipe down there, Bart. There's a visitor here. There's a lot of visitors here. I think we're all nuts. But Bartimaeus knows that he doesn't have much time. He shouts again, Jesus, Son of David. Son of David. What does that mean? Nobody's ever said that before in regard to Jesus. What it means to Bartimaeus is that here is the heir to the throne of David. David the king. who centuries ago had routed the enemies of Israel and established the throne and had united the two kingdoms of Judah and Israel into one great and powerful nation. So what it meant to Bartimaeus was that the heir to the throne was here. He's going to get the band back together, the whole army. They're going to start making their recruitment posters and arming the citizenry. And they're finally, at last, after hundreds of years, going to rout the foreign oppressors. He sees in his blindness what other people don't see. He sees a king on his way to his throne. You're probably familiar with the notion of blindness as metaphor in uh, classical literature and modern literature. Uh, Tiresias uh, in the Odyssey. Oedipus, of course, is blind. Gloucester in King Lear. And in much more uh, modern sense, uh, the character of Isaac in John's, John Green's uh, 
uh, novel and movie uh, of the same name, uh, which utterly escapes me uh, in, in this moment. The Fault in Our Stars. I knew it would come to me. All of these people are blind. And usually in literature, the notion of blindness is there for the purpose of contrast with the people who, though they can see uh, with physical eyes, are blinded by other factors like uh, jealousy or ambition or sadness or rage. Whether Bartimaeus is a historical character or not, He exists for the purpose of demonstrating to us what he is able to see that other people can't, which is through the eyes of his spirit. He hasn't given up. He hasn't stopped hoping. The story of the healing of the blind man in Jericho occurs in three of the four Gospels. Not one of them tells us uh, the source of Bartimaeus' blindness. Was he blind from birth? Or was he like so many people of the time, uh, his eyes essentially burned out by the sun? Or uh, the result of a of a disease which now we consider so simple like uh, measles. It could have taken his eyesight. Or was he like so many of the time and so many of us would be if we lived at that time, uh, his eyes are covered with thick cataracts. Didn't know how to remove those cataracts in those days. Something so simple today. Whether it was from birth or a fairly recent thing in Bartimaeus' life, everybody there who knew Bartimaeus knew that it wasn't going to change for him. He was blind. He would remain blind. Everybody knew that. Except Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus who had faith that life as perhaps he had known it before was not was not over. He was able to see uh, through these eyes of faith that there remained some hope that the last door hadn't closed. That something could still happen. And I realize that there's a certain cruelty in suggesting that if you have faith enough, all of your diseases are going to be cured and everything that you hoped for uh, would happen and what you needed in order to establish your fulfillment uh, would take place. But I, I, I'm not saying that. Since the time of the apostolic era, we, we no longer find uh, the delivery system that clear and that simple. I don't know why. I don't know why not. But the eyes of faith tell us not necessarily that we're going to get the cure that we're looking for or the thing that's going to fulfill our lives, but rather that in the imagination of God, something remains for us that might be greater and more wonderful and more satisfying and more fulfilling than what we can imagine on our own. Unlike a lot of people, a lot of characters, even in the New Testament that find healing, Bartimaeus became a follower of Jesus. Did you notice that? At the end of the story, he becomes a follower. When Jesus and his entourage left Jericho and went toward their destiny, their horrible destiny in Jerusalem, Bartimaeus was there with them. A lot of other people that he healed along the way are simply lost. They went home. Bartimaeus went with him. He became a follower. And what's implied is that whether Bartimaeus had been cured of his visual uh, deficiency or not, his life would have changed. His life 
would have been open to something brand new. And there is the blind spot that you and I share with almost everybody. Our failure to see our faith as a way of looking at the world entirely differently. Uh, Mary Smeek in a column that Renee pointed out to me uh, in the Chicago Tribune uh, calls it reframing. Reframing what we see. A friend of hers so tired of the polarized political universe. So thick of all of the infighting. Decided rather than to look at just the what was lost, he reframed it and saw a possibility. He heard a kind of clarion call to get involved. To stop complaining and get involved. We can reframe the world as we see it through eyes of faith. And that's, uh, that's the way that it can be done. There, uh, we can see the hopefulness and not the hopelessness. The possibility and not the, the despair. We have a blind spot for what might be when we get so caught up uh, in what is at the moment. And if you can't see it, get a little closer. Or pull, a little, pull back a little bit. Your blind spot will go away and you'll be able to see that. See that possibility of what, of what God wants us to see. The word uh, Timaeus is probably uh, from the uh, Hebrew word Timae. Timae, which which means defiled, which means foul, which means unclean. Bartimaeus means the son of one who is foul, unclean. I suspect that when Bartimaeus became a follower of Jesus, he, just like Simon, got a new name. When he cries out, Have mercy on me. He's crying out as one who had been lost. One who other people had seen as defiled. One that other people had seen as somebody they didn't want to be around. His audience with Jesus changed all of that. It was nice that he got his eyesight back. But greater still, greater still that he was made whole. Can you see that? We're invited to get beyond our blind spot and see our faith. There's a new way To see the world. Behold, God says, I make all things new. Even us. Let us pray. We long for newness, O God, in body, spirit, and mind. Open our eyes, open our hearts. Do we not fail to see that which is within our grasp? In your imagination, O God, there is fulfillment, satisfaction, joy for all 
all of us. Take away that blind spot in our eyes and enable us to see and to trust and to be reminded that our faith will make us well. 